A while back, I had one of my viewers ask about allowing learners to select their own avatar. And I apologize, I don't recall who made the uh, request. And um, I've just sort of had this on the back burner for a little while now. But I thought I'd cover it off today and let you guys see how I might do that. So I've set up um, a preliminary uh, slide here, which is sort of my intro page where you would, of course, then make that selection. Now, I've placed these avatars or coaches or whatever you want to call them on this slide. And uh, rather than just drop them in as images, I've actually placed them as smart shapes, which I'm using as buttons. So, and I've simply used an image fill effect and selected the characters, which of course come directly from the assets built into Adobe Captivate. So I have four characters here. And essentially what I need, of course, is a variable to keep track of what the selection is that the learner has made. So let's go into our project dropdown menu and select variables. And we'll just add a new user variable. We'll call it um, avatar and the initial value can be zero. So let's save that, close this window. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna select all of my smart shapes used as buttons, and we're going to go to the Actions tab and execute Advanced Actions. And we'll need to create a new advanced action. We'll start off with this first avatar here. His name is Anthony, so we will call this Anthony, and what we're going to do is we're going to assign avatar with the literal value of Anthony. And then we're going to go to next slide. So we'll save that as an action, and we'll close that window, and of course now uh, this will be set up for Anthony. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select Angela and we're going to go into that same Anthony advanced action. We're going to duplicate it, call this Angela and change the value of avatar to Angela, the literal value of Angela. And we'll update that action, hit close, and make sure that the button for Angela is pointing at the Angela advanced action. And now we'll select uh, David here, and we'll make some modifications to that same advanced action, but we're going to duplicate it first. Don't edit what you see here, because then you'll be changing the Anthony button. So we'll call this the David button. And we'll change the avatar to the literal value of David. Update that action. Click OK. Close. Make sure David is pointing at the David uh, advanced action. And last but not least, we'll do Jacqueline. And we'll just uh, click on the advanced actions there. Don't forget to duplicate before you start editing. And we'll just type in... Jacqueline, and we'll change that to the literal value of Jacqueline. Hopefully I've spelled all these correctly. We'll update that action, and again, make sure that it's pointing at the advanced action for uh, Jacqueline. So now what we can do is we can go to our subsequent slides. Now I've created one slide as an example here, where we have a multi-state object. And the multi-state object, if we go into state view, you can see it's all the different available avatars with a very similar message in each one. So this first one here, uh, this is the normal default is David. Uh, welcome to Janeway Trucking and to your onboarding program. My name is David and I will be your guide today. My name is Anthony and I'll be your guide today. My name is Angela, and I'll be your guide today, and so on. Jacqueline as well here. 
So I'm just gonna click away and exit the multi-state view. And all I need is a very simple advanced action at the introduction of this slide. And we just need to know what the name of this object is. It's currently image seven. Let's call it avatar slide two. And that'll make it easy to keep track of. So what we'll do is on enter for this slide, we'll execute an advanced action and we'll create this new advanced action. Click on the plus icon up here to start a new one. This is going to be a series of decisions that we'll just look at here. So if the variable avatar is equal to the literal value David, we'll change the state of avatar slide to, in this case, to normal, because that's what David is in this case here. And that's really all we need to do. Now we need to just duplicate this a number of times. I'm gonna label this decision, call it David. And what we'll do is we will duplicate this decision and we'll change that to Angela. And if avatar is equal to the literal value of Angela, we will change avatar slide two to Angela. And we'll duplicate that decision again. This time we'll go with Anthony. And we'll change the conditional check to Anthony and change the multi-state object to Anthony. And again, one more time, we'll do the Jacqueline version. We'll just relabel this Jacqueline. And we'll change the multi-state object to Jacqueline. So let's save this as an action. Oh, we need a script name check for avatar and we should probably call this slide two because you will presumably have this at the beginning of um, a multitude of slides and if i had a whole bunch of slides i would consider doing this with a shared action rather than just a single uh, conditional action like this. The advantage, of course, of a shared action is you could write one set of advanced actions, if you will, or conditional actions, save it as a shared action, and use it on every slide just by pointing at the different um, variables. And of course, uh, in this case here, the different uh, multi-state objects. Uh, that's what I would do, but I'm only doing it for one slide, so I'm just going to do it with uh, this advanced action here. So what we'll do is we'll save as an action, hit close, and on enter of this slide, we're going to check for avatar slide. So let's see what this looks like here. Let's do a preview of this project in HTML5, and we'll see if it works. So here we go, here's our selection uh, page. David is the default, so let's choose Angela and see what happens. There we go, we arrive at this page here. Let's uh, refresh this and start over again and see what happens if we choose Jacqueline. There we go, so you can truly choose your own avatar to guide you through an e-learning course. You might be thinking to yourself, why is this beneficial? I actually can think of a number of different reasons. Uh, first and foremost is that uh, by allowing the learners to choose someone, they're going to probably choose someone that they maybe identify with, and therefore it might increase their engagement in the e-learning. Uh, the other reason is it's just fun. 
You know, there's no reason why not to choose your own character to guide you through uh, your e-learning projects. And also, I would consider doing this with a shared action because, of course, with a shared action, you can reuse what is essentially a conditional action for many slides and multiple times. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com, follow me on Twitter at PaulWilsonLD, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.